episode 19 of the Just Run podcast with me, Reese Morgan. And me, Nathan Marshall. This week's episode is super exciting. Okay, before we introduce uh, our guest, Nathan, um, let's just chat because, <laughs> let's face it, um, we, we haven't seen each other or spoken properly for ages other than the the, uh, the odd text message here and there. So um, what's been going on in your world, Nathan? I understand you had a bit of a um, an incident recently. Yeah, so... Um... I went for a 10 mile run uh, the other morning by half five. And uh, it was up around Forest Fowl and Garth. And because I literally just got up and went, didn't have a poo before I went. <laughs> so if anyone knows when you're out running and you need to go, it comes on pretty quick, doesn't it? So I had to find a spot to uh, drop my shorts and have a shit. So <laughs> I found a little quiet spot. Um, went off to the woods, quickly slight, squatted, did my shit, picked it up, wiped, and then so like, as I'm running back there, and I'm thinking, what the fuck? I'd only squatted in a load of nettles and stung my <laughs> ass. So, so all day I was like, oh, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the same. Yeah, no, it's I am. Um... Very accustomed to wild poos, like as my IBS, like it's very true. If I'm out and I need to go, it doesn't matter where I am, I can go in. And uh, that's never happened to me, never happened to me before. I've had a dog come running over to me and sniff me, and uh, the <laughs> owner had to pull his dog over, which was kind of embarrassing because I'm there squatting down, just like, hello, can you uh, get your dog? But yeah, I've um, one of my my uh, <laughs> my colleagues in work. For the last couple of years, I've sent him pictures of me having a wild poo every time I go. Just thumbs up. Obviously, you can only see from the waist up, but he's got a diary of wild poo pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> just just because, yeah. He, he made, but, um, made a comment. He, he, he wasn't into it one day. He was like, I don't understand how you do it. So now I just wind him up and just send him a picture every day I am. <laughs> it's a, but, it, yeah. Well, it's going to happen if you're going out trail running, isn't it? especially early in the morning. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And talk, talking about trails, I am um, don't know if I've said on you yet, but I'm actually moving. So I, I'm obviously Cardiff based at the moment, and I'm moving to the hills of Tonarevo. So I'm going to be going moving closer up to the valleys and uh, looking out of the windows. No matter which window you look out of, I'm surrounded by hills and mountains. So I am. Have, but, have you started looking at trails? Um, obviously, I mean, I, I'm no good at making trails and with directions, but there's plenty out there. Let me tell you, I cannot wait. Cannot I'll just wait. do what I do, just go out and just get lost. Exactly. Yeah, but the problem is, I will get I, lost. Like, I actually found see. some more trails you know, at Forest Valley the other day. How? I just thought, <laughs> like, what's down here? I've been down here, and I just took, took that path. <laughs> and you just found more. Well, you yeah. Didn't, it's just... Just... You need to introduce it's, me to him. But uh, yeah, the weather was amazing when I was going after running. It was just standing out there. It was so peaceful. Yeah. I ended up, I ended up running with like taking my headphones out and everything. It was just gorgeous. Got to be done. Have you? How was your training for Welsh Coastal Path? Because in one word, on the last podcast I asked you, you uh, you said shit. Yes, yeah, picked up a bit now. Um, I've been going out and doing like 10, 15 miles, but like really slow. And so like making sure I meet in every 45 minutes and just just relaxing basically and just getting back and feeling great. Um, been doing a lot of Stairmaster as well, just to get my mm -hmm. legs and uh, hip flexors and glutes a bit stronger because I've got a bit of elevation to do. Only a little um, bit. Yeah, so I went through the plans today with my parents. Um, of like stops and everything. Uh, been producing like I think I showed you didn't I my uh, mm -hmm. my little folder of like stops and maps and everything. I've even got a checklist of like morning routines for the day, and then my evening routines. So I'm just tick it off to say they I'm done. I'm ready to go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm just Brilliant. yeah exciting. So I'm starting to get posts as well, ready for social media and stuff. Um, so obviously that's going to help me so like gaining loads of uh, donations and stuff yeah man nice well in it's going to be very yours? not long really? now for you uh, no not long at all uh, yeah, like I uh, yeah 
<laughs> it's just I suppose I'm, by now the hard work's done in it. Yeah, and it's and I think I know I'm not the only one who thinks this way because I've seen the other meshes on the opponent group. Everyone has said, is anybody else shitting themselves that they've not done enough? But the, the thing is, I've said this before, it's how do you train for 100? It's one of those things that at the end of the day, there's so many other commitments that we've got going on in our lives of full-time work and families and being parents and everything. You can only do what you can do. So yes, I've done miles. Yes, I'm working hard in the gym. Um, and I think it's just, the thing is, you could get to the race, you know, start line. You could have put in a year of solid work. And on the day, you might have problems with your stomach. Or you could pull a muscle in your leg halfway through. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, nothing is guaranteed. And I think I'm just going to go in there with a open mind. Jenks has said before, and I'll, I'll quote him again because I love what he said. I'm looking at as 100-mile adventure. I'm going to be seeing so much beautiful mountain and then just stunning views i'm just going to try my best to take it all in uh i'm going to embrace every bit of pain and discomfort that i get so that when i cross that finish line i i, I can come back with another strategy and go in stronger next year or wherever you know so it's just it's happening i'm moving forward still touch wood i'm injury free i've spent the last couple of weeks um and an hour over frigging nutrition that's doing my head and that is just what to take what not to take it's drop bags. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that bit, if I'm being honest, the packing section, just because it's always, you always worry if you need more or if, you take, or if you're not taking enough. And uh, yeah, it's I'm going in with an open mind. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. Um, and I, I yeah, can't just wait be in the moment. Yeah, I can't wait. Just manage I, the moment, the minute you're in. Exactly. And um, I'm going to do it by checkpoints. I'm thinking about how I can break it down, breaking it down to maybe... You know, I'm running 20 miles five times, for example, um, or you're doing 10 miles 10 times. So every time you kind of hit a point, everyone will have a different strategy. But I can be like, right, that's, you know, that's 20 down, another four left, for example. Do it that, I don't know, something, just small goals, incremental goals. Um, and just, yeah, just move. Yeah, keep I, th I think I broke mine down into so like every 10-ish miles. I can stop yeah. and meet and get more fuel and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, you got you got to have you at the end of the day, and even when you feel like you don't want to eat, eat anyway, because it, it that's just I find in in races where I run up the checkpoints and I've just felt like I need fluid and I don't want to eat, but I forced food down my throat and I felt so much better for it, and undoubtedly, you know, may not have finished races if I'd uh, gone with my gut. It's just because your body's in such a shock where it's not used to doing X Y Z mileage. It's not used to eating. It's, 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 it's to recovering. It's just trying to process everything. So I think, yeah, it's just, it's a lot to take on and think about. And I'm going to do it as simply as I possibly can and just enjoy it. Enjoy it. So, I, I, I think we need to organize um, a group run as well. Our first just run group meet because we've got a lot of clubs in Cardiff who are all up for one massive trail run. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll have to lock in a date and just get the invites yeah. out and just get yeah, like yeah. 30, 40 people running around forest fire and gas. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get let's get a pwn right the way. I don't know if you want to get the Welsh Coastal Path out the way first. So we've got a few months to plan it. And then, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm well up for it. Well yeah. up for it. Um, I mean, so also, I've got to mention um, Apple Podcast. Um, we can't get onto Apple Podcast at the moment due to being too successful to be honest um, <laughs> it's got to the stage now where um, they want our bank details to start paying us um, but it doesn't let us put our tax information in on the moment because it's only US based but we're in the UK and also um, our banks do not take international payments so that's another reason why we can't get onto Apple so just bear with us um, I've sent them an email today saying look what do we do um so yeah yeah nice yeah. so we're literally we've been restricted because we're doing good <laughs> yeah yeah um, i mean it, there's there's worse reasons in there so it, i that's know good. yeah yeah and on that note actually just this thank you so much for everybody who has listened i mean we've got i think we've gone out over 31 countries five thousand, if not more you know listeners and um 
it's just been crazy, absolutely crazy. So thank you so much. Uh, fresh off the back of his Wild Horse 200 win, we have Nathan Hutton. Um, Nathan is one hell of an ultra runner with an awesome back catalogue of runs and podium finishes, as well as winning last week's 200-mile adventure. He also com um, has completed and won the Gower 50. He's taken second place in the Dragon 100 and plenty of others that we can talk about that we'll get into during this episode. Um, we'll talk about his journey so far and also what he's got planned in the future. We're really looking forward to it, and I'll keep it short and sweet. So with that, Nathan, welcome, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it, and thanks, and thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have never done anything like this. This is going to be a really inter interesting conversation for me. Um, <laughs> I'm not particularly a... Um, I don't know, it might sound weird, but I guess a spotlight person. I guess it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not something I've done before, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, don't worry about it, mate. We're, we're just a bunch of idiots who just like to talk about <laughs> running and uh, running and anything fitness and doing crazy things. But first off, I think for me, Nathan, and anybody else is listening, fucking well done. Like, what an unbelievable performance, mate. Like, I, how are you doing? Like, how do you feel? I bet you're still in, like... Some crazy like Claim Seven, Claim Nine, Claim Seven, Claim Nine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's um, if I'm on this, it's really, it's still really surreal. Um, yeah, it's very surreal. I look back on kind of pictures and videos and stuff, and it's just um, it's just a lot of it still. I think feels like a little bit like a blur. Um, but it's um, you know. The win was never planned. It was absolutely never part of the plan. Uh, never part of the plan. Um, and it just, um, yeah, uh, well, crazy, absolutely crazy experience. And, and 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 I think, look, I'm, yeah, I'm obviously absolutely just blown away by it all. Um, yeah, yeah. Blo blo just absolutely blown away by it all. It's crazy. It was so it impressive. Was, it really was. Wait there, wait there, before we go any further, what's more impressive is... I have to bring up Nathan's background. Okay, so anybody who watches this video, um, Nathan is in my co-host, obviously, with two Nathans on. I got, sorry, Nate, this is, I feel like this is more important than the 200 mile <laughs> Do uh, it. wild horse right now. For for the last five months, anybody who's watched this on YouTube would have seen that Nathan has had what appeared to be a phallus behind him on his background <laughs> or a sweet gun. And he's uh, he's up to the game. Look at you with your little. Yeah, uh, it's not bad, is it? Is it really yeah. five months we've been doing this? Yeah, January, yeah. So nice. almost six months, isn't it? And in that time, you've only just realised how bad your background is. <laughs> well, no, I, di I didn't want to cave and change it. <laughs> <laughs> I win. I win. Anyway, sorry. Just to, I, I digress really quickly. Back to something far more important. No, Nathan, mate, that's so... You, you didn't, obviously, you didn't go into that thinking you were going to go for a podium finish. You didn't think you were going to go in and blast it? Or did you have a strategy? I think... So, I had a, the, the the plan going in. The plan going into Wild Horse always was that I um, had three goals in mind. I uh, a friend of mine actually a couple of years ago talked to me about the bronze, silver, gold rule, and um, I always I, I did set myself those three um, points in the race, and the gold was really as close to that course record but that but that gold you know that's if everything is absolutely going spot on you feel great it's easy and you just and 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 and, and you know you're you're on track for it but i and then silver was around that 64 65 hour mark and then bronze really was under three days i didn't want to be out there longer than three days i think that you know the given the train had gone really well and i was feeling great going into it i thought that all that was achievable um but I always felt that Friday night, that Friday late night, was where I would where I would end up finishing that 10, 11 p.m. mark, so around that 64, 65 hour mark. Anything under that was just in, yeah. It, it, I I I honestly didn't think that that would happen. And as far as podium finishes, I mean, nothing's guaranteed in this in this stuff we all know that right it's so hard it's it's so tough um you what you, you have absolutely no idea who you're going to be racing on the day um and look i thought i thought that given you know 
Reese does this, this amazing thing where he basically celebrates the top five runners, which is really unique. It, it doesn't happen in, in, within a lot of companies. I figure, you know, if I'm if I'm around that 65 hour mark, look looking on previous finish times for the last couple of years, that would sit me pretty well within the top four or five. Mm. Yeah, so, and you came in, I mean, have you had your official time yet? Because I know unofficially you put 59 hours, 19 minutes, but have you had the... No, I haven't, not yet. Um, I, I, If I'm honest, I don't expect that to change very much because my Garmin is pretty spot on. Um, and that is, I think that's taking 30 seconds longer. So I don't think that will change, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, have, yeah. 15... Have you got your race bling? Have you got it there? Your race bling you can show? Well, I haven't got all of it, but I've got this amazing, I've got the amazing um, Dragon Wild Horse medal, which is just phenomenal. Wow. Um, yeah. And I've got, um, it's Look it's just, that. yeah, it's just phenomenal. We've got the, 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 the buckle as well, which, um, and then um, the half a ton log. Um, I messaged Owen actually after he after he um after he crossed the line and or a day later or so, and I said, you know, well done, it's a massive achievement. And he apologised for the the weight on the uh, first place log. I was like, it's fine. It was heavy at the time, but it's on my mantelpiece now. I was going to say it was nice. It'll sit nicely on there as long as I didn't yeah. break it. But for anybody who isn't is listening and can't see that, I recommend jumping on YouTube because Nathan's just shown the. Uh, medal and it's a bloody good one at that fair play mate really really good um going right back to the beginning then mate i mean you've done a lot of amazing runs obviously we've never met so i had the pleasure of kind of stalking your instagram account and looking through the runs and stuff you've done um take us back though like wh how did you get into this like how, where did it all come from so i mean I, I guess it might be quite a common story i mean i, I did i did a bit of road running um we're probably talking um maybe six seven years ago six seven years ago i think i probably ran my first half marathon um and yeah kind of kind of got hooked to the road running scene for a little bit but if i'm honest that didn't last very long i think i gave that a couple of years um i gave it a couple of years and i was trying to remember i th i either through a friend or I saw it somewhere basically it was the Brecon it was a Brecon of Cardiff friend wall crawl ultra um trained for that went in with the classic road runner ego well like I'm a I'm a really good road runner this will be really easy right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> was it absolutely was not it spat me out the other side and it was absolutely brutal I think I uh kind of clawed in around the sort of eight hour mark maybe at the time maybe a bit longer um but instantly i was like i want to go back this is absolute <laughs> this is absolutely where i want to be um went back to that found pegasus um did a couple of those races I honestly within a within a very short period of time um i was hooked loved it loved everything about it absolutely everything about it um, attempted my first 100 which was the Dragon 100 again the classic well I've done 40s I've done 50 mile ultras how hard you know how much harder can a 100 mile ultra be well it can be really bloody hard and that's and that's and that spat me out I had my first ever DNF which honestly and I hope if people are honest about this they'll have a similar thing about it that DN that, that Dragon 100 DNF was absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me Um. 100% the best thing that ever happened to me because it it made me refocus on everything my approach my training and what i actually wanted to get from all of this um and refocusing for that and training to go back to that was um was such an amazing experience and and i honestly i i absolutely love doing this i love it um and it doesn't have to be about you know chasing medals all the rest of it that's nice that's part of it but um it's such an amazing and the one thing that i love about it and i and i got that very quickly was it's such an amazing community you meet so many people i mean some of my you know i've got friends who will, will come on to because i'd like to mention them part of the crew that helped me deliver this result but you know i've met some amazing friends from this sport 
um, that I, you know, th- uh, th- this community that I spend half my life running with, I've known, you know, a couple of years. It's just, um, yeah, it's it's a it's an amazing place to be. And uh, t- talk about those people now. So, what what was it? Because that was one of the questions I was going to ask. Did you have paces? Did you have? Crew? I did, did you- um, and I, I had a mixture. Um, so I had a I had four runners, four paces, and one um, crew member. So I had um, Tommy Mack, uh, who's actually a local um, Kafili lad who um, road runner now turning his um, uh, yeah interest to this. Um, I had um, Dan Reese, um, Pembrokeshire boy. Um, I had um, Sean Styles, um, Cumbran boy, Natalie Etten, who you all know, um, mm-hmm. and then um, Danny Ford, who was my um, who was my crew guy in the car. I have said I said this at the finish line, and I've said it to them. There's absolutely no way that I would have got that finish in that time without them. Absolutely not. Wow. It, 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 it would have been too hard. It, it, it would have been too hard mentally. It would have been too hard mentally, and it would have been too difficult to, man, to, to manage it all on checkpoints. Um, they were, I mean, most of those runners did two checkpoints each, so 40 mile stints, 12, wow. 30, 12, 13 hours, some at night, some in the day. And Danny in his car was away from his, you know, his missus and family for three days um, to follow yeah. me to follow me around South Wales, uh, and, <laughs> and, and 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 yeah, just um, an, an amazing commitment, but an amazing team. Wow, that makes a difference. And it's, it's massive. Uh, you you said um, it would have been too mentally hard then. So yeah, what 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 was it? I mean, obviously it's a two hundred mile run. Is well thirty thousand feet of elevation. It's a in hell of a run. What was it though that you particularly struggled with that you think you wouldn't have been able to manage with or that you found the hardest then? Because I'm curious. I think I th- so so the hard the hardest part about um the hardest part about it for me, I mean there's lots of hard parts about it, but the hardest part about it was the the, the sleep deprivation, the lack of sleep. It was really hard. I mean, I ran that on an hour and twenty, an hour and a half sleep. Um, I could do that though because of the because Danny's car. What he'd done is planned in waypoints in between checkpoints to get to me um, at any point. So I only had to go maybe a max of six seven miles. I think there was one long stint, but most of it was six seven miles, and his car was there. Um, the hardest thing was when you were late in those miles, late in that race on your own. I do you know what I don't know if mentally I'd have been strong enough to push on in those really exhaustive moments where you've got nobody, you've got you got a you know it's, you got a nav by yourself, you got to sleep at checkpoints. So I give a huge kudos to anybody that didn't have what I had because I even found it hard doing that. It must have been unbelievably difficult if they didn't have a crew and a team. I was mad. So an hour and twenty, hour and a half in the whole what two and a half days. So how did you how did you do that? Was that like split up into little like kind of incremental like power naps or yeah? So so the I mean I, I was lucky because I could I could plan that based on the car being there right at, at, at short intervals. Um, had I not had the car there, I'd have had to have a different strategy and had an hour, an hour and a half at checkpoints, maybe at those sleep stations. But the way I did it was basically, if I felt tired getting to the car, um, I would take 20 minutes. Um, I think I left it, I mean, one of the mistakes, I left it far too long on the first, um, the first stint. I think I got through 27, 28 hours without sleeping. Um and then had to have that 20 minute nap because I was just so exhausted. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I did it. So basically 20 minute naps. Wow. Mental. Owen had said the same thing to me when I asked him how he's feeling and what was the toughest. He said it was the sleep yeah. deprivation and everything. Yeah. He said physically, like running wise, you could cope with the tiredness, but yeah. it was just the lack of sleep that was the killer. Mm. It's a it's, different kind of tiredness, though, isn't it? The thing is, physical exertion, like, you know, going into a 200 mile race, you don't have to be, you know, frigging 
brain surgeon to know that running 200 miles is going to hurt physically, like your joints, your muscles, your feet, everything. But that's a that's a pain that you can manage because yeah. you can do things to help it. But the yeah. the mental sleep deprivation, you can't do anything about that other than yeah. sleep. That's it. Yeah, and, um, and, it, and it's so hard, um, Reese, and I'm sure as a I'm sure as a parent, you'll have experienced it. Um, <laughs> but 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 I think what what this I think the scary part was, and um, and and Natalie absolutely called me out on it. Uh, at a checkpoint in, in front of Reese, and she was right to do it. You know, I was annoyed at the time, but um, but I but I thanked her later because she actually um saw me closing my eyes as we were running at one section, um, and she was like, "This, you can't, you can't do this. You're actually closing your eyes now. You you need to, you need to have a nap. You need to get your head down." And because you imagine if I didn't have that right, and you're out there on your own. <laughs> Yeah, in the with, with the various cliffs and hills and things yep. like that. It's yeah, that's mad. I've seen that on vid, the multiple documentaries I've watched where they always have paces with them, and you can see them. They're literally nodding off as they're running. Yep. Uh, and I I hope I don't get to that point. And I hope that if I do get to that point, there is someone as sensible as Natalie there who can say, "Shape up, mate. Come on." Yeah, <laughs> I think you push. I I guess the difference is. I suppose the difference was with me is I I. Naughtily, I knew I could do that right because I had a team, and I think the other the you know, the other part to it is I did kind of push the boundaries with sleep because I had the team and had the car. My my strategy would have been very different had I not had those things. I'd have had to have those longer sleeps at checkpoints, um, like everyone else had to have and use those sleep stations. So I did push the boundaries because I guess I could in a way. Um, I'm not saying it. it it's a it's a good way to it's a good way to do it, but it certainly helped me go on less sleep. Um yeah. knowing, knowing that I had that support there. That's one of the benefits of having paces, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, to absolutely yeah. Kick you up your ass when you're you're doing things wrong, but also yep. you know, to acknowledge that okay, that's fine, as long as he's staying safe. If not, I'll pull yep. him into the side and what have you. Exactly. Uh, and at the time you're gonna think you're right because you're like, hang on, right I'm doing really well here, but they're yeah, gonna yeah. be like I'm not sleep deprived. I haven't run 150 miles, so listen to me. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And 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 I got to I got to checkpoint. I'm gonna say six. I got to checkpoint six, and um, I got there. And, and Reese literally looked at me and was like, "Right, you need food and you need to sleep because you don't look. You might be fine." but you don't look fantastic. So he was like, eat and sleep. And I honestly, I ate, um, not something I would usually eat, but I, I honestly, I ate beans on toast and I had a, tw- and I had a 20 minute sleep. And honestly, I felt like a completely different person. Mad. Yeah. What was your uh, nutrition like for the, for the three days? God, not the greatest. Um, like, did you have a plan going into it? No. And that's the problem with me is I, I that's one thing historically I've I've never done very well. I mean the plan the the plan was to make sure I was having um five hundred mils of um tailwind as often as I could, and then that was either a litre or five hundred depending on how warm it was. So I was having that, and then I was I was trying to snack on something every half an hour an hour. But you know what it's like when you get in the groove and you're out there, that easily then turns into two hours and two and a half hours. And that's when your energy starts to get sapped. So I actually corrected myself after that checkpoint three, which is in which was in um Krakow, I corrected myself and was far better through the race um than I had been leading up to that point. And again, Danny was absolutely brilliant as far as the crew because he was making sure the paces were telling me I needed to drink more. Because I think I got back to one section after 13 miles and I had like 150 mils out of a litre. And he was like, this is, you're going to get, this is not good. You're going to get into dehydration. <laughs> this, is ding- you know, this is not good. So they stayed on to me about it and I got better with it. Um, it wasn't great, um, but it was better than it had been. Mm. It's, um, I'm just wondering, I'm curious, because it's, well, 30,000 feet of elevation as well. I'm talking, linking into what Nathan's asked you about the fueling and all that stuff. So 
Do you personally find it easy when you're, because I'm still struggling, I think everyone does to an aspect, uh, to eat and fuel when I'm running? Because it's just hard. So do you tend to like um, take it in when you're going up a hill or something, when you're having a bit of a breather? Or what do you do? Yeah, I tend to, I tend to scoff on stuff, to be honest with you. My 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 kind of rule is, if if I see a set, I don't tend to scoff on the climbs unless it's walkable, because um, mm. I get this, I get the sticks out and 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 move on those, um, which have changed my world. By the way, I wasn't a stick, I wasn't a pole person at all um, before I started training for this race. Now I'm all in. Um, so I what I try and do is, if there is a section where I think okay that is runnable, but that's when I eat because I can move quick. I can keep, I can walk quick enough um, that I'm not necessarily slowing down too much, but also I can eat at the same time. Yeah. That, that's kind of how I plan it is if it's a section where I'm like, mm, I could run, but then I eat. That's a good, good tactic, good strategy. Yes. Cause that's one thing I think I try to do. I, I simply find it too hard when I'm moving. I mean, if I'm on a quick walk, like you said, yeah, I think there's probably a lot of people listening who are in the same position and it's a good way to think of it actually. But, was there any um out of all of the elevation which in particular kicked your ass? Any stand eight movements? I think probably the climb out of the, the climb out of Bracken was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> the climb out of Bracken was absolutely disgusting because you're already, you know, approaching seventy miles by that point. So you you know you've got you've got some work in your legs. So yeah, the climb out of Brecon was absolutely absolutely disgusting. And if I'm honest with you, the majority of that first night was really really hard because the, not just the climbs themselves, but the terrain was absolutely saturated in most places. I mean, it was it was a it was a bog in most places. Um, and then you had the more technical, you had the more technical work. Um, on that second day um, towards the back end of the of of, of Breck and you had the more technical climbs. But um that climb out of Breck and was awful. Ugh. How did you feel in the mornings when the sun came up? Well they were that that's a really good point actually because they were what I looked forward to the most. Um because you're so I mean your your body is conditioned to sleep at night, right? So whatever sleep you've had, if it's whatever sleep you've had, come two or three o'clock in the morning, that's when that that's when it's hard. That's when it's really, really difficult because your body naturally wants to sleep. You're moving slower and you're just exhausted. So I was clock watching for half past four, quarter to five when that sun was coming up. And that honestly then gave me, you know, it, it then kind of switches you on a little bit and gives you a and gives you a good couple of hours. Um where you feel a bit better again, but those, yeah, those mornings, I absolutely welcome those. Yeah, it's the sunshine, isn't it? It's like the vitamin D, because the weather wasn't awful as far as I remember, and I mean, getting that bit of light in your face, is just, and also, I suppose, mentally, you're like, right, okay, yep. cool, it's another night done then, so you're just yep. like, yeah, you're getting into it. That's going to be, I'm really curious, I've made, I've made a bit of a dick move throughout my training, because I'm doing the opponent. Yeah. Um, are you, are you doing it as well, maybe? No, I'm not. No, no, no. no. Although I Sorry. have been, I have volunteered to run. Um, I think f- f- the last forty miles with uh, Nat as a pacer. I agreed. It was a deal. She would do this, <laughs> and I would do that. So yeah, I need to recover quite quickly. As a park run for you now. <laughs> well, let's 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 see, let's see what condition <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> well, I I've made a dick move because I've not run through the night. I've been training for this for over a year. Well, a year probably just under. And I was said all along, I'm going to go out and do some night runs. And yes, I've run at night, like, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night when the baby's gone down or when the wife's gone to bed and I'm feeling particularly awake. Or I've got, I go out really in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, but I've not run through the night. And I'm, um, it's a mixture of emotions. I'm excited to see how I do it and how I feel and how my body reacts. But I'm also shitting myself a bit because, like you said, this that's when, you know, that's when your body should be shutting down, and your body is going to be screaming at you. What are you doing? This this is what you're supposed yeah. to be on a pillow now, asleep. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to be trudging through frigging some kind of crazy peak. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited but anxious. 
Um, I think, um, I mean, I I hadn't, I mean, I hadn't done any, really. I'd never, done, so I'd never done any leading up to this race. So for the 100 mile races, I'd never done any night running for, um, none at all. And I, and I, um, I guess, I guess my, I guess where I was coming from was you, you, you will get through one night. You'll be surprised how you feel and you'll get through one night, right? The, the, the issue is going to start depending on kind of where you think you want to finish time wise. And I don't know what time the race starts. So I, I don't know um, what the chances are of going into a second night, et cetera, but that's where, that's where the strategy needs to come in. If you're going to go into a second night, then you're going to need to think about it because that's certainly what, from Wild Toss, that's certainly what I've taken away is you can get through one night, you can get, you know, you can get through a morning, sun comes up, you've got a few extra hours in you, um, but it's that second night. Because mm. it doesn't matter, you, you're not. No, I'm not. I mean, I, I keep, it's, it's a difficult one because my wife keep. I want my wife and my boy to be at the finish line with my old man and my mum, obviously. But they're like, well, what time are you going to finish it? And I'm like, you honestly, do you, <laughs> I would love to be able to say. That's the classic eight question. Eight 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 yeah, eight o'clock Saturday, Sunday morning. But I know that 6 a.m. Sunday morning is a 24 hour mark because we okay. start 6 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I, I don't even know, but I know one thing, and that is that I am dead set against going into a second night because yeah. I haven't planned for that, and no. I don't care what time I finish, but as long as I don't... what yeah. We'll see. We'll see in it. I know, I, I, I know what you mean. It could go really well. It could go absolutely dog shit, and yeah. I could end up crawling over the finish line Monday morning. I hope not, but um, we'll see. In fact... That brings me to because what's really interesting is we've got this group on um, Instagram all to do with like um, people doing the Epona and all you know that's how we've been arranging recce's and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, you probably met Jenks actually, Mike Jenks. Have, he's been on yep. the podcast. Yeah, he's a great yep. guy, good, runner. really good guy. Yeah, yeah, and they've all been on um, on the group saying that they took a lot away from it and they put some really good info for out there. Right. Um, one of the things they said that kept coming up, which is probably the main reason people were DNF in, is foot care. Um, <laughs> I saw a picture of your uh, your hoofs, your hobbit feet, mate. The state of those things with tape yeah. on them. <laughs> yeah. Talk us about that. How, how well, did you? Um... I mean, you've just you've just you've just hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I I um they, I had poor um foot care. I didn't look after them. I think there's a couple of things that I really um, would do differently next time is I didn't give myself enough um, options for shoes and mm -hmm. change of shock, socks. So I was essentially having to go back out um, in so with soaking wet feet. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what ripped my feet to bits. I mean, the the, the hard thing is there's two ways to look at this, right? Could I have done better? Yeah, I pro I could have given myself more options. So that would have been good. But it was so wet out there. It was absolutely saturated um, for a lot of it, which meant you could change them, but it wouldn't be long before they were wet and mucky again. Now, I'm not sure whether, I'm not saying that's the right approach. Um, and they did get, they did get bad, but um, it's really hard when it's so wet out there. Um, but, Saying that, I think, yeah, more options for shoes, more options for socks, and dealing with blisters early on, which I also didn't do. <laughs> do you know, honestly, right, what's mad about this is that you came in first and beat the course record, I think, obviously, like smashed No, it. no, no, didn't beat the course record, just to be clear. Oh, didn't you? No, I no. I thought you did. No. Oh, what's the course record then? Course record, I think it's 57 and a half. Oh, I thought you'd beat. Oh, no, man. no, 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 no. Well, you got to go back next year and get it, haven't you? Anyway. Ooh, less than <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, um, it's funny that you've literally took first place a couple of hours off the course record then. Sorry to correct myself there. But, and and pretty much had no strategy for your feet or anything and, and messed up that and, and still came in first, you know, with a bloody really good win. <laughs> Um, I guess it goes to show, imagine if you, but again, like you said, imagine if you'd had a foot strategy and foot care, would it have made any difference? Because you, you can't change your, your socks every time if you get wet. Yeah. So I think it's, it's one of those things that you just have to deal with. But I think blisters is the key. And the minute you feel them, little yes. bastards starting, yeah, that's yeah. the big thing. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and look, I didn't. Um, 
it's ironic really because um one of um Reese's one of Reese's guys, um Chris, I think his name was, was gave us a massive um talk the night before on <laughs> foot care um and what to do. Basically everything you've just said, you know, treat them early. If you can feel a niggle coming on, if you can feel something that is just starting to bother you, take a look. Clearly I didn't do any of that. Um and that picture is at check. That picture that you would have seen was at checkpoint seven. You know, I'm 140 miles deep by that point. You can't do anything with them, man. You, you, <laughs> you know, you. It's like, well, they lit. You know, one of the one of the lads there was trying to sort of add, some, put some tape to them, but he was like, I don't know where to start with them. Really, I mean, they're they're not they're not terrible, but they're they're very sore. Uh, and they've got mm-hmm. lots of areas that are going to bother you. So basically, we'll try taping them up, but put your socks on and crack on. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But they were very, they were very painful. Um, they were very painful through that second night and very early morning to the point where I had to kind of step on them quite hard for a few minutes before going again, just to try and get used to how uncomfortable they were going to be. Um, but they've healed to be fair they've healed really well in a couple of days so yeah there have you been doing anything like recovery like recovery wise for your feet like apparently epsom salt baths and things like that have you done anything or yeah i do i i do epsom salts and i uh i mean the key thing is is let them breathe so you know where where people tend to either tape them when they're home or put coverings on them. The key thing is Epsom salts and then let them breathe. So keep your socks off because blisters heal so much better when there's air on them. Otherwise they stay really wet. Um, so yeah, I've let them breathe quite a lot the last couple of days and they're, 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 they're much better, which is good. <laughs> Thank God for that. I seem like an um, amateur talking about this, but um, yeah. Mate, I, I this, look, you're not. This is I love. This is why I love doing this because you're clearly a bloody good runner. Um, very, very, very good runner. Takes is to some people on this planet will never ever run that kind of distance. Never even walk that kind of distance in the speed that you did either with all these issues. And it's refreshing because you're experienced and you you're good at it and you got that skill. But you're still saying, well, I need to do this and I need to do that yeah. and I need to do that. You know, no one's perfect, and that's 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 absolutely fine. It, 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 you, no one ever should strive to be perfect. You've always got to keep trying and get it better, haven't you? So it's it's refreshing, really. Um, you'll always well, live. Then, go on, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, I think, you know, you'll always. Um, there's so much, there's so much going on in these races and, you know, whether it's, and I would put a hundred mile race in the same category. Um, because it's it, you know in in a way it's very similar. You're just doubling what you would do as in in terms of behaviors and strategy etc. But there is so much going on in them, and and a lot of the time, I know we've just briefly talked about it. And a lot of the time, you can spend so much time fix, fixated on what the end result could look like. Um, and I always kind of pause and go, right. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But you got to get there first, and there is awful lot of work to do. An awful mm-hmm. lot of work to do, and anything can happen out there over a hundred miles and two hundred miles. Nothing is guaranteed in this. Um, so there's. So do you know what? If you can leave these races, uh, you know, look after yourself. I think you know. Look the the. the Oh, the poor kind of Vito story is an example, right, of not looking after yourself because the poor guy was absolutely just dehydrated, didn't look after himself, didn't manage himself um, and had a, and had a DNF. And that's really common. So look after yourself, stick to your, stick to your plan and strategy and just tick those miles off. Might sound mm-hmm. silly because there are lots of them and I get it, but the only way you can do it is just tick those miles off or tick those checkpoints off because that was my plan. I wasn't focusing yeah. on 200 miles. I was focusing on checkpoint to checkpoint. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. We actually, um, you probably saw, uh, we put a post on Instagram actually for anybody who wants to ask you questions. And we've had a few uh, few good ones and a few silly ones as well. And, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> okay. Nathan, yeah, but Nathan's got a few, I've got a few. So, Nate, do you want to uh, do a quick fire? <laughs> yeah, so um, I can't remember who this was from, but why do they call you Mr. Vogham? <laughs> 
I don't know who put that on there. Um, they call me. They call <laughs> when they say they call me Mister Morgan. There's one person that calls me Mister Morgan, and is it um, it is Mister. It is uh, it is uh, uh, Lee from my Stig that calls me Mister Morgan, and yeah. I, they call me Mister Morgan because I mm. I have a, had an over tendency to spend half my life training on the Vale Coast Path, um, because it is one of my it is actually one of my favourite stretches of Coast Path, um, but yeah, I spent far too much training time training on there. I think that it was Lee Lee runs yeah. ultras, yeah. So thank yeah, you. For don't you get um, don't you get a bus or train? Just as far as you can, and then just run back every weekend. So basically, how I do it is, it depends what sections I'm going to do. If I do, but yeah, essentially, yeah, because it's a linear route. So basically, I'll go off to Bridgend and then Red Bridgend to Penarth, or I will do um, go to um, uh, Lantwick Major and then do Lant Lantwick Major to Penarth or into Cardiff. Um, yeah, I I love that stretch of coast path. Love it. It's a beautiful route. I did oh, it last stunning. year. I, I did the, the Pegasus and uh, yeah, the Volgum and it was, uh, it's lovely. It really it's, is. It's and, stunning. Um, yeah, it's stunning. I'm definitely going to do that. I want to do that. Like I said, um, off my own back. Like, so, I mean, maybe I can uh, link up with you and we can do it together. Please do link up. I love getting out there and it's one of my favourite stretches. So I'm always keen to get out there and do that. Always. Perfect. I got um one question I got asked and I feel like this is, a bit of an inside joke. I don't really understand it. From someone called Rob Lyons. Uh, <laughs> she asked two questions. A, do you like bright shorts? <laughs> and B, is Craney your master? <clears throat> Rob Lyons shouldn't be allowed to ask questions, to be honest with you, in general. <laughs> um, two things I will say to him is um, yes and yes. <laughs> and what who look you can't leave oh, it like that look, so so they're, they're from the gym um that's where uh, this has come from they're from the gym and um one day let's just say i wore maybe shorts or a little too um bright for the gym crowd more than acceptable on the trails um reese but maybe a bit too bright for the gym crowd that didn't go well um and there's a lad in the gym called uh, luke crane who um plays rugby for newport actually but we train in the same class and he's relentless, absolutely relentless. Um, doesn't let me get away with anything. So that's where that, that that's where that has come from. Ah, right. Fair enough. Go on, Nate, you do quite, way. I can't remember the others. Um, you do quite a lot of gym work, don't you? Do a ton. Of, I do. The gym boys will say, maybe I don't do a ton of work, but for me, I think I do a ton of work. Yeah. So I, I, when I started, doing more kind of 100 mile race i'm the i'm the many so i think after my after the, the first successful um dragon 100 i built that into my schedule so my schedule every week um i know things happen sometimes but generally it's two strength and conditioning sessions a week um and that mm -hmm. has been the case now for a couple of years and i've absolutely seen the benefits particularly for 100 mile um running um yeah mm. So strength and conditioning, do you do you mix it up? Do you tend to focus the exercises specifically around running, or do you also ch obviously chuck in like a lot of upper body work and stuff? Or do you tend to do hit stuff or Yeah, so these are these are these are program classes. They're, they're, they're more or less they're, they're more or less kind of CrossFit classes, really. Um they call them strength and conditioning, but they're essentially crossfit classes. So there's a there's a strength element, which is kind of your, your, whether it's your deadlifts or cleans or snatches, that kind of stuff. And then there's there's the conditioning element, which is usually uh a high intensity hit session, kettlebells, lunges, cardio, that kind of stuff. So that I do that twice a week. Uh, and I've been and I've been doing that now, yeah, for a for a couple of years. And it's paid dividends. Um in those longer races. Yeah, I, I constantly try to get it in and, and do, uh, you know, a couple of days a week as trend and condition. I, I find just from, you know, I, I might skip the like for a part of, for, for a certain like time, I couldn't afford to go to the gym and I was trying to do stuff at home. But you know what that's like, especially as a parent, it's just difficult to fit the, the things in, not making excuses. And so I was just running and all I was doing was running and I yeah. got 
strong at running. Yeah. But I would notice that on the longer runs, it was the, the muscle fatigue I was getting and the yeah. aches and things afterwards were just, it was chronic. And now, I mean, I'm not elite, but I'll do a lot of strength and conditioning now. Like just your, your box standard old school movements, you know, your squats, your lunges, like you said. And um, can't go wrong with that kind of stuff. My God, it makes a hell of a difference. Like, like I can run the same distance that I would have before when I wasn't training and it, I recover so much quicker. Yep. And yes, I still yep. get the aches and pains, but it's so much easier to push through. So I, yeah, I don't understand why people who want, you know, do this sport and want to take the ultra or the marathon world seriously and don't do that because, yeah, I think it prevents injuries as well, personally. Well, and again, you've, you've literally hit the nail on there. That's the other thing. I mean, there's it's not just, there's absolute benefits from, you know, direct benefits to running, um, but injury prevention is massive. And also um, the conditioning element for um big elevation so you've got it coming up in a pona it is tasty uh well i think it's around that sorry but it is you know you're looking at sort of seventeen thousand feet over 100 miles is no joke um and that strength work will pay dividends on those climbs because what you'll find is that um where people are where people are uh where it's taking its toll and it's huffing and puffing and the legs are burning the quads are on fire maybe you will feel 5% better, maybe 10% better, and that will be from that strength work. That's certainly, that's certainly, I think, part of the story for Wild Horse for me is I move consistently throughout. We, you know, we walked the, we walked the climbs, we ran all of the flats and the downhills, um, even to the very last mile. Um, to be able to, to be able to run, it's ironic really, because I think I ran, nearly my strongest in the last 17 miles and I had um all all race which is crazy but I think the strength work was part of that yeah, yeah massive, it was a massive part of that yeah I agree I'm a big big believer in it huge believer in it um Jenks who we mentioned earlier he did ask a question actually in response to the Instagram post which I'm surprised we haven't spoken about already did you have any hallucinations at any stage so the only so the only hallucination I had was um do you know so where we come off the sand dunes and there's the uh, caravan site um before on Rossilly Bay. Right. Do you know yeah. it, basically the the re- re- horror it took us around the uh took us around the caravan park and around the back path um to um Worm's Head, not along the beach. Um, and it's a horrible path. It's about is two that up miles. the hill? Yes. I yeah. Fucking hate that hill. Oh, it's so <laughs> steep. <laughs> um, and I actually thought I saw Daz. I thought Daz was taking photos, so I was coming towards him, and I thought it was Daz taking photos. And it what was, was it? A, a big boulder. <laughs> it was a rock. It was a rock. <laughs> it's just a rock. But I've got to say, fair play to Daz because he seemed to be sort of like there every day. Yeah, that is he just—he's just—he's just just around. He's just around taking photos, just just doing his thing. He just pops up in the middle of nowhere. I know. How the fuck did you get here? I know. (laughs) Honestly, he's like he comes into one of the checkpoints. He says to me, um, he says to me, "Oh, I only came. I only came down to take photos of you. I'm not even working this event." Like I should have been grateful. I'm like, oh, thanks, Daz. I mean, I've been running for two days, but thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, he just, he absolutely, he's just, um, but he takes, you know, he takes some great shots. Doesn't ask, doesn't ask for a penny for all of them, and it's just, it's, um, it's just great. Yeah. In yeah, fact, do you know what? On that subject, one of the questions that you got asked was, uh, "Are you always who is it?" Sean asked. It was, um, and oh, he's smiling. You, yeah, are you always smiling? No, are you really as smiley as you seem, or can you just detect when Daz is in photo range? <laughs> I am. I am extremely good at detecting when Daz is in photo range, because <laughs> um, I think both. Well, I think everybody, all of the team, um, would absolutely be able to um, tell you that I was not always happy during that race. I had some. Um, I had some really, really tough moments where. Where if I'm really honest, I could have easily gone. I am absolutely done. You, this is too hard. Um, mm. So, so I think 
do you know what's funny? I think you, you see the end result, right? And I and I don't think people do who do this sport and do what we do, but I think a lot of other people could see that result, see the photos and be like, oh, he looks amazing. He feels amazing. What an amazing result. There is dark spots in between that where even I, you know, leading the race, you know, you think, all right, you're leading the race. It's all fine. Absolutely not. I had some really tough moments. Um, myself and Sean were running that section through Armenford Pantafun on way. Um, and we went off track by maybe, maybe 200, 200 feet, maybe 300 feet. It's nothing, right? You just backtrack and you get back over the gate. I was absolutely just not having it. I was raging. Um, but it's just tiredness. It's tiredness. You've been going, you don't do any more than you need to. Um, yeah, it's, um, I absolutely had some, uh, some moments in that where I could have gone, no, nah, mm. I'm done. This is too hard. And, uh, and that's what is amazing about these runs is because you didn't somehow you you plucked it up. But I, I can imagine when you crossed that line, you probably thought to yourself, um, and actually brings me on to one of the questions that Paul Bennett Davis asked, one of the guys who's been on the podcast before, how the fuck did I do that? He literally asked, how the fuck did you do it? So like, and I bet when you cross the line, you do, you have that moment when, all that chaos and those dark nights and all that pain, and then you you, you lent against that barrier with that medal in your hand, shaking Reese's hand, and you're probably like, "What? What just happened?" Like, yeah, hey. yeah. And I don't, I, and I, and I don't know. I honestly don't know if I can. Like, I mean, I can I suppose I can answer it in one, one, in one part. I would say that um, sounds. My son said saying it again, really, but the team were absolute. I cannot, it, I cannot put into words how amazing they all were because um, it could have easily not, it could have easily not happened had they not been around. Um, I think the other thing, to, the other thing I would say is that you, to a certain extent, you get out what you put in, right? And that doesn't mean podium spots and all that. It just means whatever you put into it, you will get out. Um, I had committed eight months, it absolutely like eight months of full on. I mean, I think I was, I think I'd averaged, you know, well, but it's seven month training block for it. So there's the training, there's the team, and there's just you know you have to have those gut moments where you just have to just get moving again it might be tired it might be really uncomfortable you might wake up in the car at, after having a nap at two in the morning freezing cold and you've got to go again but the point you just made is getting that last stretch hitting that gate getting that medal yeah it's worth it amazing it's worth it so I noticed cool. as well straight away after you touched the gate, it was that hug to Reese. What is it about Reese that everyone wants to give him a hug? He's just, <laughs> he's just, he, I don't know. He's just, he's just got this aura about him. You just, um, I think, do you know what? I Reese is, I, I think he's just such an awesome human. And I think that he, he, he invests in you when you're out there. You know, he, he absolutely wants, he wants everyone to, he wants everyone to finish that race and he will be there to see everyone cross that line. And he was, doesn't matter what time of the day it is, what time of the morning it is. He doesn't get people to step in for him. His thing is he will put that medal around every single person's neck who crosses that line. And I love that about um, what they've done. Um, he follows you on the checkpoints. He, he just, it's, it's that whole, um, it's that whole kind of family vibe piece, right? That him and, that him and Karis have built. And um, it's, I honestly, I don't do enough Pegasus events and we'll see what happens um, in the future for the wild horse races. But they've, yeah, he's just got a, 
just a really kind of personal approach about it and I love it because you don't get that with other events like I've run Centur- I've run Centurion events and the Thames Path 100 um, last year and yeah you, you just get you give a medal to at the end like everyone else who crosses the line because there's you know 700 people doing it whatever it is you're just another person across the line you get your medal and that's it but and that's mm. fine but you it does feel a bit more special when you do yeah. it um, i suppose the phone call before the race he's building up a rapport again with you. He's gonna know you yeah the phone call yeah. no one does yeah. that nobody does that i mean i've done again you know the the the, the run walk crawl guys are great i've done a i've done a ton of their events i love their races but um yeah, all your emails fired at you, which is great. And they're always thorough emails with all your instructions and all of that. But it's that phone call, it's that personal phone call that he gives everybody is just I think I just think it's amazing. I'm not sure we'll see if he can keep that up when this grows and he's got hundreds of people racing, but but I think it's that rapport piece that you've just said, that that relationship, right, and that investment. Um yeah, I and, agree. That, and, and you and you feel that in the races as well. You feel it. Well, the thing is, I, I volunteered that uh, um Canham, uh, my first event I'd volunteered at, he even right. rang me the night before as a volunteer. It's amazing. Do you know what I mean? And like, I think people forget, like, we all love Reese and then Carison, and I think people forget what he and her have created together. Like, Agreed. they have created yep. a community. Like, 100% yes, agree. the phone calls, the, the, the hugs, the medals, the sticking around till the very last person crosses. Yep. Like he is, he has created, put all that aside, he's created a community. He literally yep. has. Like, he, yeah, he has. There's not many people out there who, who don't know about Pegasus now. And it's such an amazing community that yeah, I agree. everyone knows everyone. And I, I'm um, I'm so excited for it. It is just growing. Um, and the female participation rate is phenomenal. Um, that's a big, big thing with, with his races as well. Did you see that um, on the uh, Wild Horse? 100% females finished. It's excellent. Yeah, it's that's, incredible. that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's incredible. But, uh, I've I've been seeing this for ages though, because I, I I see the women are more controlled. Uh, they've got no ego, so they don't go out too fast, and they sort of like just dig in and just get it shit done, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, and you're spot on. Yeah, they do. They just dig in and get shit done. I don't think, um. Uh, and I like that about it. And, and the fact that they've got the stat, the fact that they've got those kind of stats is amazing. It is amazing. And I think actually, um, the it, I think it's the best finish rate this year um, for the Wild mm-hmm. Horse. Um, I think mm-hmm. n- maybe eight or nine DNFs. You go back last year, I'm pretty sure it was like 40% of the field DNF'd. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's it's a it's amazing to see it's amazing to see the mixture um and the level of participation with male and female and I'm pretty sure if you look at the numbers they're pretty balanced in that wild horse race. It'll be interesting yeah. this Saturday now with the Vogum. It will that's, be that's yeah. the showcase one and There's, guaranteed yeah. you'll have like loads of um she runs Cardiff runners. Yep. Um yeah. women's runners. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think they'll be Potentially be more women than men in this yeah. this Saturday. Hmm. Bloody good, good. Yeah. I um, I love watching the women racing because they 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 kill it. They kill it. There's just like you said, Nick. There's just something about like watching the the women run, and I, I hate that the fact there's disparity. Like because it should be equal. And you know, you look at the Courtney DeWalt. There's all these people. There's this maybe. I don't know, but maybe it's because of those people, the Courtney DeWalters and Sally McCrae's and all these amazing, you know, Jasmine Paris's and yeah, um, it may be that's just like spurred more women on and gone. They just you know, don't. Give us they just don't complain, do they? No, they don't because what do they, they have a lot that they can complain about, but equally a lot of those women have been through far tougher times than any man I know. You know, for a start, they give birth to babies for fuck's sake, something we'll never ever have to go through. You know what I mean? And everything else that they've got to deal with, you know. Oh, I don't know. Them. We've got to watch them give birth to babies. That's <laughs> tough. He's making a very he's making a very good point. Oof. Although I'm I'm not sure who this is going out to, so I'm going to choose words uh, very carefully. Yeah. Nate, you said that, mate. You, you yeah. said that. 
I'll be honest, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my comments to myself there. But... <laughs> I think one of the I think one of the really positive things though about Pegasus that is that has maybe changed the balance over the years is because the cutoff times. So I yeah, think I, I think where you know previous races you might be a bit nervous entering because you're not sure you know the cutoff time might be tight. Having those generous cutoff times, um, well, they don't necessarily feel generous in some races, but. You know, have because there's cutoff times. I think there's cutoff times for the wild horse. Obviously, there's a cutoff time for the opponent. Although I don't know what that is. Um, fifty. Fifty. Okay. I mean, that's not that's that's you know that's again that's doable. So I think it opens the field right, and they've done it in the they've done it in the best. But that opens the field that lets more people in, and then it, it gives you more confidence. Um, and over time, you invest yourself. You, you're a better runner. You you know, you do it quicker. But that en- that entry spot. Well, you know, you can just take as long as you need, and you can cross that line. So, I think that's yeah. that's definitely changed the balance. For, um, it seems to have changed the balance compared to other races. Mm. I think I, I'll go as far as saying now, this is a big statement, but because of the way the recent cars are, that they you could take the medals out and the t shirts out, you could take all that stuff away and strip it down, you know, and have the checkpoints and stuff. But as long as he was there waiting for you at the end and he still did the phone calls and he keeps that family approach like he does now, because that's what it is, as a family, I think people would still continue to do it because really, that's why everyone does it. It's such an amazing community. And, yeah. and I know we've stressed that a lot and kissed their ass. And I'll do that. I will continue to do the same because they deserve it. Um, it takes a lot of work to, to put those events on and, 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 you know, doing everything that goes into it. And he does it. With, with perfection, like he's yeah, literally do, yeah. setting yeah, time, yeah, yeah. and I think that yeah, yeah. a lot of people who who have these you know companies who are doing these things can take a lot from him. Um, and so, yeah, as as I hope that it continues to go on and grow, and yeah, amazing. Um, Me too. I mean, I'm I'm ex- I'm think I'm excited for, I'm excited to see where this where this where Wild Horse goes now. I mean, they've already launched. Um, They've already launched a new announcement of their Mid Wales, um, Mid Wales Wild Horse 200 for next year. Um, so he's kicking that back off. So I'm excited to see where this goes because for me, this this is this is a niche. This is a niche that that it, you know could go could do well. It's you know, mm. there's not there's not many of them. Uh, they're not accessible. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see where he takes this. Um, mm. Which is yeah, which is you know, let's see. Mm, definitely. So, what's agree. next for you, Nace? What you got lined up apart I from have, uh, pacing that? Yeah, I'll be at a, I'll be at a Pona in a few weeks, and then um, on the first weekend in August, I am back out, and I've got the um, Centurions uh, North Downs Hundred Mile Race. Um, so eight weeks, um, eight weeks, yeah, eight, just over, just over eight weeks, uh, and I'll be back out doing the Centurions North Downs Hundred, and let's see, let's see where, uh, yeah, let's see where I can go to in that. Have you got any bucket list races? I like asking everyone this, like not just you know in the UK. If you could do any race in the entire world, have you got any bucket list? Lists? Yeah, I mean, I've kind of, I kind of um, fulfilled one of them because I've got, um, I've got the um, North Challenger Spine Race in September, uh, in um, January next year. So not the full okay. spine, but the North Challenger. So it's the 160 mile section of the Pair Nine Way, and um, I've got that in January, which is kind of a bucket list race. Um, my plan, though, um, is to get off abroad next year. Nice. Yeah, and- get off, get off abroad next year and hit hit um hit Europe somewhere, um maybe um maybe Mont Blanc way maybe yeah there's there's a couple of options and I think the other thing is because of this um because of this collaboration with the 100 World Championship um for Wild Horse I should be able to get out and do one of the races in um either Iceland or Portugal. Nice. Um, yeah, so 
I hate to speak to Reese actually because we mentioned it. We he was chatting to me about it at the end of um, at the end of the race, but wasn't really taking too much in. So I need to <laughs> I need to have a ch- I need I to have a chat. Uh, yeah, I wonder why. Um, I need to have a chat with him to see what how that works and and what I need to do. But I would love to take. My go, my my goal is now is to take opportunities and do something different. I've done a ton of, I mean, I've done all of them, but I've done a ton of races over here, and I kind of feel like I'm just chasing times, right, and just chasing things. And um, it'd be nice not to have to do that and go out and um and try something different. You want to jump on the Ultra X, mate? That's what I'm doing next year. I'm doing um a world's first where I'm going to be doing all of their events in one year. Um, wow, wow, yeah, that's going to be tough um uh, <laughs> but yeah that is phenomenal reaches i'm uh i'm reaching out and uh, it's coming along nicely i'm reaching out to people i gotta mention it on every episode because i am you never know who might listen to this but yeah i'm, I'm reaching out for financial support because being transparent is friggin expensive um Depending but i've got a positive response already so yeah i'm starting that in rwanda running 110 kilometers in january so that's that's already lined up my goodness um, yeah, and then um, Tanzania in February is next. And, um, yeah, then I'll be taking them off as I go along then. So I've got Morocco, Jordan, uh, Finland, uh, Nevada, all kinds of runs. So I'm going to be doing all of them in one year. So uh, they've got some phenomenal runs on in, like, Madeira and stuff as well. So should have a look at that, mate. I'm sure I should. Do- hmm. Yeah, I should have a nosy at that. I haven't even, yeah, never thought about it. So, yeah, that's something that I'm going to... Yeah, something I'm going to take a look at, but that sounds wild. Yeah, they're in some stunning locations. They do. They have got some unbelievable locations. Like, I, uh, yeah, it's unreal. That's all I, I, I love the idea of just traveling around and, and, and exploring these countries by Yeah, feet. yeah. Let's, uh, let's hope we can all cross some bucket lists off. Um, nice. One thing I did, I did want to ask, actually, because you gave me butterflies earlier when you said that we got the opponent in a few weeks. So thanks for that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's something because it's relevant to me because I am looking at all of this as we speak, as you uh, you know know about. But Luke uh, Merritt, one of the boys, one of the runner punks, lovely guy. Yeah, really um, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He, I met him, yeah. he asked um, on the Instagram post. He asked, "How did you fuel and stay on top of your salts?" And I am interested with that. <clears throat> so I've so salt wise, to be honest with you, I've never really. Um, well, I say never really, unless it's very warm. I've never struggled with, so mm-hmm. I don't. I I I tend to base I tend to base my salts on whether I feel I whether I feel hydrated enough, um, and I can usually tell from my sounds really thing, but I can usually tell from my skin if I'm getting dehydrated. It was never warm enough for me to do that, so it wasn't an issue. Now, in the past, I have in summer races. Hence, Epona, because obviously that's going to be deep in June when you are going to have some heat. Um, mm. the, the chew salt tablet of the business. I usually have a pack of those. I have a pack of those in my uh, race pack, and I usually chew one of those every uh, half an hour, an hour at a time, depending on how warm it is. But those salt chews of the business. Yeah, they're great. I've, I've used them for years. Yeah, I, I've used them on all of my ultras. Yep. The water, the watermelon ones are a game changer. They, yep. They've been ones that have really helped me. And I've, I I don't know what the weather's going to be like. You know, at the end of the day, it's Wales. It could frigging pee it down the whole time or it could be roasting. So yep. it's definitely something I've been paying close attention to. And um, Precision Fuel and Hydration, they're an amazing company. Um, yeah, yeah. On, yeah, on their Instagram, they give loads of really good tips, like about hydration and all that. And obviously... Like you said, you pay attention to the skin or your hat. Like if you see the white marks going yeah, through it, yeah, every sweater. Yeah, and yeah. There's loads of hypotheticals to consider, but I mean, there's I was tons. interested. Yeah. I think I think one of the things, one of the key things, I definitely do, and I've been telling, and I've, I'm, I think it's even, um, I think it's even having a conversation with um, Natalie about this, about um, about tailwind. So I think one thing you got to be really careful of with tailwind is when the temperature rises start to reduce how much tailwind you're putting into your putting into your ball because if you're a, if you're a two scoop or a two and a half scoop person or a full sachet person you need to start to reduce that 
So you're getting more water per um, bottle than you are tailwind to get more, <clears throat> excuse me, to di dilute it. Otherwise, it's very powerful. Yeah, it is. And it, and, it, and it will add to your dehydration. Yeah, it adds reverse effects. It's like, yep. if, for example, obviously, that's one thing I've read a lot about is obviously depending on the heat, depends yep. on how much water you take in, depending yep. on how much sodium you have. And you've got to get it right. Because like you said, if it's absolutely scorching and you're just drinking lots and lots of water, brilliant, but you are also going to be sweating like crazy, which is exactly, really exactly that. Electrolytes. But then if it's freezing cold, you might, you're not going to be sweating as much. You will be sweating, yeah, you'll be but sweating, you won't yeah. be as much no, as no. type. So it's, it's all very relevant, but it's um, it's just a difficult thing. Like everyone says, it's an eating and drinking competition because you've just got to try and manage it. Is. it and, yeah. It's it's, it's, it's really hard. It's it, eating, eating and drinking. I mean, I am really not i'm i'm you know i'm not great at it um and it's still something that i'm really trying to learn uh, myself because it's not easy and because your stomach the other thing is you know your stomach will want maybe want different things to what you've got um and that's hard as well and that's something that you rely on checkpoints for then so you know take your take your stuff that you know that sits well in your stomach and then if you fancy something different at a checkpoint then make use of it and that's exactly what i did i think i like i said stuffing beans on toast and i think i had a beef and tomato pot noodle at one of the checkpoints which isn't something that i would usually have but it just you know you walk in and go actually i i really fancy that so play that game as well yeah yeah banging Hang in. Um, Nate, I don't know if you have any other questions, but I, I wanted to do something a little bit different on this one, actually. <laughs> something I had an idea about. You're both called Nathan, so it makes it hard. I'm going to call, I'm going to refer to our guest, Nathan, as Wild Horse League. Well, that makes it easier, so you know okay. who. <laughs> okay. So, Nate, um, I was going to do a funny little rapid fire round. Just ask quick questions and see if uh, Wild Horse Spiegel, that's easier, can just, just what well, you come up with, just simple straight to the point questions. You up for that? God, sure. <laughs> no, 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 they're real simple and okay. stupid. I just had an idea, but okay, so favourite running shoes, go. Uh, Hoka, Mafate, Speed Force. Nice. Favourite post-race snack? Uh, pizza. Yes, mine too. Pizza okay, favourite pre-race breakfast snack? Uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't eat uh, before races. Fair, fair enough. <clears throat> Morning runs or night runs? Um, night runs. Running solo or with a group? Oh, solo. Solo. Fair. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm an. I'm a. A group I'm a, holds I'm, you back, don't they? I'm a. You're well, so bloody no. quick. <laughs> I I tend to be pretty I I tend to be pretty antisocial if I'm honest with you but but I think it's it's it needs to be it needs to be the right people in the right place. <laughs> okay, and finally, what was harder, sitting on the toilet or walking in the after you finish the oh, two hundred? <laughs> you got to get up the stairs to go to the toilet. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> um, stairs in general. Um, yeah. I think I had to balance my hands on the bath and the cupboard to lower my to lower myself. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't the only one, mate. I, I, we've all been not. there. Yeah, nice, mate. That was great. <laughs> Nate, look, again, I'm going to refer to you as Wild Horse because you're both. I didn't realise. I forgot that you're both Nathan, but just want to say, on, on you know, thank you so much for coming on, mate. There's uh, you're I, welcome. You know, you, you only did this crazy race like last weekend and uh, we were sat watching you and dot watching and here you are talking about this. So it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know the highs, the lows and everything in between. And I hope that people listen to this and take, you know, a lot from it, which I know they will because it's refreshing. Like I said at the start, you know, you you struggled through a lot of it in certain aspects and yet you still come away with a win. And it's that's nice. It's good to hear. And again, thanks. Thanks so much, man. Um, I Cannot wait to see what you're going to go on to do, mate. I really can't. No, you're welcome. And look, thanks thanks for having me. And I think one thing I always say to people is um, it's not about... Uh, look, results are great, fine. Um, but for me, gen gen genuinely, 
uh, my my view is 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 if this kind of stuff, these forums inspire other people to get on some running shoes and go hit some trails, whether how whether it's five miles, ten miles, or a hundred miles, then that's class for me because I I absolutely love this. Um, there's nowhere else that I want to be than out on those trails. So yeah, that's that's kind of my view on stuff. Um, nice, yeah, and, and you'll love it when you get out there. I can't wait. Yeah, we're good. Nice one, mate. Appreciate that. Really, really. Thank you so much again from me and Nate for, for coming on. And uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we'll let you crack on and enjoy your beer and um, look forward to seeing you out in the trail nice soon. Nice one. Well, yeah, thanks for coming on, Nate. Yeah, I'll brilliant. Probably see you, with the mate. you will. And good luck with that. And, uh, you know, and just um, don't, it, you tra if your trainer's being good, you will be, you will be sound. Uh, it will okay. it will happen and I always this sounds really cliche but genuinely run how you feel and you'll be fine perfect thank you mate appreciate it appreciate thank it you thank you very much Jens. appreciate it nice one cheers, cheers man. bye, yeah, bye. Take it easy, mate. okay so before we end um, I don't know about you Nate but I'm still actually getting over last week's episode as well with Grant um, it's, if anybody out there hasn't listened to it yet his attitude and mindset is absolutely solid um, and tenacious and and just based off his list of achievements, you'd think he'd been running for a decade. Um, so, yeah, please head over and listen to the previous episode if you haven't listened to it yet. Uh, and just to echo something that I said at the very start, thank you so much to everyone that has listened and subscribed. Honestly, we wouldn't be able to do this without a view, any of you. Um, we have a lot of fun. Uh, and we hope that you guys too, too, and, and find this informative. So long may this rain. <laughs> Thank you, guys, for everybody who listens to the Just Run podcast. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Bye. Cheers, bye. bye.